What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the cheaper version of the React Element 87, the Nike React Element 55. always for tuning in today. If you didn't see yesterday's video, I actually announced that I'm doing a pretty big Halloween themed giveaway. Now I'm not going to announce yet what sneaker I'm giving away, but keep in mind it probably will be in the same sort of realm as the last big giveaway that I did. And that was a brand new off-white Nike Presto, which honestly I still don't even have that colorway in my collection. I really need to get a pair of those. But this giveaway should be honestly just as exciting, except this time around I'm giving more of a Halloween themed sneaker away. So if you want to know more about the upcoming giveaway, make sure that you're subscribed down below because I'm going to be talking about it more in upcoming videos. Videos. Also, I may be dropping some hints about the upcoming giveaway on my Instagram and my Twitter at RealSethFowler, so make sure to give me a follow over there as well. The reason I'm doing this giveaway is twofold. The first, because Halloween is coming soon, and I think a Halloween-themed giveaway is actually pretty cool. And the second and more real reason for doing this is because I want to thank you guys just so much for supporting the channel and supporting myself. Just the fact that you guys even watch these videos and subscribe to this channel means so much to me. The fact that I'm able to make a living off of making content for you guys is unbelievable, and I just can't thank you guys enough for it. But with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. Earlier this year, Nike released a sneaker which many people have been calling Sneaker of the Year. As I'm sure you already know, that sneaker was the Nike React Element 87. Ever since that sneaker's initial release, we've had multiple colorways and even a collaboration, and each one of those shoes have all completely sold out. So in response to the unbelievable success of the Nike React Element 87, Nike has just introduced a brand new budget model called the Nike React Element 55. The Element 55 uses less premium materials on the upper of the shoe and costs $30 less at retail than the Element 87. And in addition to that, they produce more 55s than they did 87, so the shoe is more widely available. So if you missed out on a pair of the 87s, you should be able to grab a pair of 55s. When I first got the Element 55 in, I was really excited to check it out and wear it around and really start to feel out some of the differences between the 55 and the more premium 87. So without wasting any more time, let's do just that. Here it is, the Nike React Element 55. first thing you probably noticed about this shoe is how much more striking this colorway is than probably any of the 87 colorways. Even though a bunch of the React Element 87's colorways are crazy and are out there, nothing is sort of as bold and even as contrasty as this particular colorway of the 55. I love the way that Nike made the budget version of the shoe stand out by creating such a bold colorway. To be fair, four colorways of the shoe did release at the same time and only two of them had this sort of bold black and another color look. But I really like that Nike is experimenting and not only changing up the materials in the 55, but also changing up the color blocking. So jumping right into the materials, the first thing that you'll notice is that unlike the Element 87, the Element 55 has a completely opaque, black, non-see-through upper. At least for me, one of the biggest selling points about the 87 was that you could see through to whatever socks you're wearing underneath the shoe. And that allowed you to really customize the way the sneaker looked on your feet, which I thought was a really cool touch. However, because the 55 is the more budget model of the two sneakers, it seems like they saved most of their costs on the materials on the upper. The upper of the 55 is this thin, sort of stiff, nylon-feeling fabric. It's primarily black, however there are these tiny white details sort of sprinkled throughout that create a linear pattern on the toe and on the midfoot. That at least gives the design of the upper some depth, which keeps it from just being a plain, boring, flat black looking upper. As with the Element 87, you've got stitching down the center of the toe. What's actually kind of interesting is as you continue up on the shoe, you'll notice that most of the construction of the sneaker is pretty much identical to the 87. Again, the main difference between these two shoes is the material makeup. At the base of the tongue, you've got this black, sort of horseshoe shaped piece of nubuck. Just above that, you've got the same sort of felt feeling material that you have on the 87s. Like the 87s, the lace loops protrude out of these materials. This time around, the laces on these shoes are just plain black rope laces, nothing really special there. Underneath the laces, you've got this really thin piece of black felt material that makes up the tongue. It honestly feels super cheap and flimsy. It's not like the 87 that has two pieces of material bonded together to create a slightly more rigid tongue. It is, however, asymmetrical like the 87, and of course you've got your Nike React and your Nike Check pinwheel printed on the top of the tongue. Moving inside the sneaker, like the Element 87, they're really isn't any padding to speak of. I mean, okay, you've got a little tiny piece right there. 
right there at the end, but that's, that's about it. And I mean, even that's like barely anything. Not that it really matters though, because the shoe actually does fit like a sock. The Element 55 keeps it clean and simple with a plain black insole with Nike branding and teal on the heel. As for fit, at least for me, the Element 55 fits true to size. This shoe fits more snug than the 87 and it feels like they really worked out some of the fit issues on the 87 with the 55. I will say that it's definitely a narrow shoe, so if you're a wide footer, maybe go up half a size. But for narrow footed people like myself and probably normal people as well, true to size is definitely a good way to go. One complaint that I have about the upper of this shoe is that when compared to the 87, it's definitely a little bit hotter. Even though the upper is thin, it's not really well ventilated, so your foot will get hot the longer you wear the shoe. But honestly, the fact that the shoe fits so well, it kind of made up for the heat issues. Continuing back to the midfoot, on the lateral side, you've got this bright green Nike swoosh. Unlike the 87, it's not printed and is actually just a separate piece of material glued onto the upper, but it still has that cool design detail where it sort of wraps underneath the upper like the 87. And of course, the Nike swoosh is only present on the outer lateral side and not on the inner medial side. Continuing back on the sneaker, you get to another one of the React Element's signature stitching details, and just below that, you've got your tiny TPU heel cup in black. Even though the heel cup is tiny, I was still really impressed by the lockdown of the sneaker. I really think that's attributed to the better fit of the shoe. It just really fit my foot like a glove. Or a sock, I guess would be a better analogy. Moving around to the heel of the sneaker, you've got a black pull tab and a downward facing teal Nike swoosh. Moving downward, you get to the namesake of the sneaker, this black React midsole. I can't tell if it's just me, but there's something about this midsole that just doesn't feel as soft as the regular 87 or even the Element React for that matter. It's probably totally a mental thing just because I know this is a more budget sneaker, but for whatever reason, I just feel like it's not as soft on foot. And even then, it's like ever so slightly less soft. It could just be that this is a new sneaker and I need to break it in, but from what I remember, I didn't have any of those issues with any of my other React sneakers. That honestly could just be totally me though. I, I don't know what it is. Regardless, the midsole is extremely comfortable and I think it looks really great in this matte black color. Of course, accenting the midsole and the outsole, you've got this very bright teal rubber. This rubber is for added durability and from what I can tell, it's pretty much the exact same thing you find in the Element 87s. And that pair I've worn a bunch and so far, are so good, so I'm not too worried about the durability of this pair. To wrap things up, honestly, I think this is a decent shoe. For 130 bucks, you're definitely getting a comfortable sneaker and one that I do think looks pretty good. However, a lot of the things that I loved about the original 87, like the super bold design and the translucent upper, aren't as present or just aren't there at all on the 55. That said, I still do really like the colorway and I love the fact that it features the same React midsole, or at least I think it is the same React midsole. So if you missed out on all the other colorways of the 87 and want to grab a very similar looking shoe with actually a better fitting upper, the 55 is definitely a good way to go. But that about wraps up the review of the React Element 55. I'd love to know your thoughts on which shoe you like better, the 87 or the 55, so make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to know more about the Halloween giveaway, Way, make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet and also give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at Real Seth Fowler. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.